Hi, everyone. My name is Dr. Taylor Sodeborg, and I am the medical director at Tiny Health. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through a baby gut health report. So what we see here are the results from a seven-day-old. And this is an amazing time to check in on the microbiome because we know that from the very start, the immune system is learning how to behave from its microbiome teachers. And it's important to check in early to make sure that the immune system is learning from the best teachers possible, meaning the right microbes. Tiny Health is a great way to check in on the microbiome because we use a technology called shotgun metagenomics. And while many tests prior to Tiny Health use something called PCR, shotgun metagenomics is now the gold standard for microbiome research, meaning that you are getting the most up-to-date insights from the most recent research available because they're all using shotgun metagenomics. And with this, with this technology, we can tell you not only who is in the microbiome at very, the most accurate levels, but we can also tell you the function of those microbes because we sequence their genetic information. So all of this means that we can not only tell you who's there, but we can also tell you how well they are doing their jobs. And it is a very simple test, just a quick, no mess swab, another benefit of shotgun metagenomics. So if we look at this report and we go to the bottom, we can see the microbiome breakdown. Here we can see all of the species, we can measure down to 0.05% of the microbiome community. And here there's not too many for this baby. However, there's hundreds for adults. So if you wanna see how extensive this can get, watch our video on the adult microbiome. So a list of bacteria is fine and well, can be helpful to understand, but what do all these microbes actually mean? Well, Tiny Health has taken out the guesswork by breaking these down into meaningful categories. So let's review all of these different categories and insights so you can see all the information you can glean about the microbiome health from a baby gut health test. All right, so for babies, one of the most important places to start is the baby gut type. Baby gut type is based off of the dominant bacteria in the baby's microbiome. And the most important microbe early in life is bifidobacterium because it because it helps them to digest the beneficial sugars found in breast milk called HMOs or that are added to formula. And digesting these and having lots of bifidobacterium helps to build a strong gut and educate the immune system. So here from one of our blogs, we can see that the ideal baby gut type is one where there's lots of bifidobacterium. Type 1A, 2A, or 1B is okay as it has a good amount of bifidobacterium. The other types are not so ideal because they are dominated by non-bifidobacterium and oftentimes these are actually very unfriendly microbes. So you may be thinking, well, these are just from babies who are born by C-section or have antibiotic exposure. I am here to tell you that actually babies who are born vaginally, never seen an antibiotic, exclusively breastfed, can also have one of these non-ideal baby gut types and there are things we know we can do to increase the likelihood of seeding with beneficial microbes. However, it is not a guarantee, which is why it's so critical to check in on baby's gut health early and often. If you want to know ways to optimize the likelihood of seeding baby with beneficial microbes, check out our pregnancy and trying to conceive video. All right, so if we go back to the results, we can see that in this section, this baby has a gut type 4B, which is not very common and also not an ideal type. But we can see sneak peek that we things do change very quickly from this non-ideal gut type to the more ideal type one. All right, so now that we're oriented to baby gut type and we've learned that this is not actually an ideal one, let's dive into some more of these categories to explore further how we can optimize this baby's gut health. If we click into beneficial microbes, we can see that just like the baby gut type says, there's very little bifidobacterium and we can actually see that it's quite far from the ideal 80% that we would like to see. Again, sneak peek, this does get better. We can also see specifically that there are not any of these four classic HMO digesting species or the ones that digest those beneficial sugars found in breast milk. So that's not ideal. However, we can, because we have the ability to look at function of the microbiome, 
we can check in on abundance. So bifido, HMO, digestine, bifido, they're not there at very high levels or at all. We can look at the function of the microbiome, however, and we can see that there are some microbes that are helping to pick up this function because this metric looks at the genetic capacity to perform a job regardless of which microbe it's coming from. So we can see here that there are some other microbes that are contributing a bit to helping digest some of these other types of HMOs. So as we increase the bifidobacterium, we will wanna see this number increase as well. Now, this is very interesting because for some babies, they may actually have normal levels of bifidobacterium, even those four HMO digesting bifidobacterium. However, they might not be performing their function very well. So it's important to look not only at the abundance indexes, but also to see if the HMO digesting capacity needs support, because that would be another thing that would need to be supported in the microbiome. So again, with shock on metagenomics, you can get the most detailed insights to provide the most specific and highest recommended actions for your baby's gut specifically. All right, so the next thing I'm curious about for little ones is this disruptive microbes category. No, probably needs to, doesn't need to be said, we don't want high levels of disruptive microbes. However, we do want a little. So why is this Enterobacteraceae family flagged when it's at 0%? Well, this is one of the most important things, a big difference from babies to adults. And this is why tiny health tests are so critical because we are the only ones who have those ranges for babies. 80% bifidobacterium in an adult would be flagged as way too high, but tiny health is able to identify that this is a baby and that's actually ideal. Same thing with enterobacteraceae. These are microbes that may be classically thought of as unfriendly, E. coli, Klebsiella, Salmonella, Citrobacter. However, we want just a little bit of them because these pro-inflammatory immune stimulatory microbes are going to teach the immune system how to behave. So you can see here the green zone is having just a little bit of them, but not too much. So this baby actually should have some of these ideally introduced to help train the immune system and reduce the likelihood of chronic inflammatory conditions later on. Unfortunately, they have none of those ideal immune stimulatory microbes, but we do see that there are two that are very elevated and likely contributing to some gut dysbiosis, disruption. This is what the gut looks like for a lot of kids who have gassiness, colic, a lot of food sensitivities through breast milk because their gut is just not very happy. Also in this section, we can see the C-section signature. So this brings us to our next type of insights. We talked about abundance insights, functional insights, Signature insights are interesting because they look at a collection of microbes, they look at their abundances and determine if it's consistent with a signature or not. We can weight different microbe abundances differently to give them more or less importance based on how much they contribute to the signature. So here we see that this is a microbiome that looks like a baby who was born by C-section. You'll notice I didn't say this is a baby born by C-section because you can have a C-section signature even if you were born vaginally. We, again, know ways that we can ideally optimize the likelihood of seeding with beneficial microbes, but it is not a guarantee. So we see here, this baby has a microbiome that is consistent with C-section delivery. And if this signature persists at one year, there's strong data showing that the likelihood to go on and develop asthma is significantly increased. But again, you can feel a little reassured. You can see that this went down significantly in the next sample just a month later. We have some of these other signatures for other conditions. We can see here that we have those for eczema, asthma, food allergy, and atopic march generally up until three years old. However, I do like to point out that tiny health is not a diagnostic test, but it can provide you with insights about your microbiome and suggestions on how to optimize gut health based on existing peer reviewed scientific literature. All right, so the last metric that I wanna point out for the baby gut, even though there's so many more we could dive into, is microbiome seeding. This is a very cool insight where if mom has a sample from within six months of delivery, we can highlight which microbes came from mom in their little one and which microbes are from the environment. How cool is that? So we can see here that the unfriendly microbes in Nico's gut are from the environment. 
And we can see that the ones transferred from, from mom, Maria, were largely variable. Again, watch our video on how to increase the likelihood of beneficial seeding. All right, now I don't wanna leave you hanging for the metrics that we flagged as needing support or needing improvement. We will provide you with actions on how to improve the microbiome. So here we recommend bifidobacterium probiotic, which can not only boost those beneficial microbes, but they're also very bossy and they can kick out the less ideal disruptive opportunistic pathogens and bring those down into ideal levels. If you click into this, you can see that we have links to products that we have vetted for high quality and efficacy, uh, lots of FAQs and links to our related blog articles. We also have some recommendations for supporting moms who are breastfeeding to help in improve their baby's microbiome, as well as those who are formula feeding to learn about HMOs and how can they ensure that their baby is getting those. We also provide just general guidance on how to support the microbiome for all the things that come your way. So whether it's antibiotics or introducing solids, Tiny Health has information to help support people along their gut health journey. All right, so now to end on a happy note, as you saw a little bit throughout, I would like to show that in just a month later, this baby's microbiome with a short course of a Tiny Health recommended probiotic was able to shift to one of those one B is a bifidobacterium dominated type. We see that the bifidobacterium have gone up to over 60%. And like I said before, you gotta make sure that HMO digestion function is happening. And now we see that all of these are flagged in the green. Lastly, we see that those opportunistic pathogens are in check. A little bit of that immune stimulatory enterobacteraceae has been introduced and the C-section signature has been resolved.